Um, but anyway, let's uh, let's move on to I suppose to, to to a related issue here, and that is the public image of archaeology. Um, because because some people are again they're sort of put off sharing what they do because they think that the public image of archaeology is outdated. Uh, and they've got to, they roll their eyes every time someone says, "Have you found, have you found any treasure there?" Or, you know, do you get paid to do that? This kind of thing. Uh, and this this really has been highlighted for me in the past uh, the past few weeks. With there's been a, well, there has been frankly for months now a whole uh, slew of stories to do with Sarah Parkak and her uh, very very interesting work using satellites to identify sites. I think this initially started off probably most famously on sitting on British TV with uh, ancient Egyptian sites and at the moment I think she's interested in South America. Um, but in in most of those uh, stories, and I'll put a link to, 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 to several uh, if I can find them, in most of those stories in either the byline or the first paragraph there's a there's a there's a there's a reference to Indiana Jones. Now <laughs> This really annoys me because, on the one hand, you, you know, you see people going, "Well, the thing is, Mark, you know, like realistic, uh, or the thing is, Mister Soup, realistic um, statements about archaeology they don't sell newspapers." And my my comeback is, I don't think any statement about about archaeology sells a newspaper. But uh, but it's not that this, that this is a lazy and, and popularist out, and slightly outdated reference to archaeology. But the guy is not is also fictional. Indiana Jones never existed. And as cool as he is, he's living a very exclusive lifestyle. You know, even for an academic, very few people can just get on a plane and fly somewhere. And, and I don't know, what, what do you think? Do you, do you think that, 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 that there's, a, there's a place for Indiana Jones in the public image of archaeology, or do you think we need to be moving on? I don't think we've got any choice in the matter, because I think mm -hmm. the, um, the public chooses the images that it wants to live with, and ditches the ones that it doesn't. Uh, Indiana Jones, I have absolutely no problem with at all because, um, folks, it's a film. It's a story. <laughs> it's not real. Uh, no, no, no. And I love him. I mean, look, I've got the po I've got the, I'm, exactly. I'm surrounded by, I love Indiana Jones. Exactly. There's the old, get look, look my, at, the, at the root of this, there's the old gag, but there's one thing worse than being talked about, and that's not being talked about. Yeah. And I, I think if, you know, if Indiana Jones is the gateway drug to the wonders and the riches of the world's heritage for for people, I really don't mind. In fact, I'll, I'll celebrate that and I'll applaud that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, 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 and including the you know the the, um, the research that they did to dress the sets and the bookshelves and the and the references to I think Gordon Child gets a reference in oh in yes well, in yes. Um, in the worst of the films um, he gets a very <laughs> <laughs> gets a direct reference in Crystal Skull. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Indiana Jones says, uh, "Yeah, Gordon Child was good because he got out in the field." And that was coming. Kind of so yes, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I in, in England certainly the, the the other image of archaeology is men with lots of facial hair. Um, we're both stereotypically, you know, we're there. You know, um, we're not wearing. A multicolor jumper today, though, because that was the pro that was the, the province of the late wonderful Mick Aston. Um, but Mick, whatever reason he started wearing colored jumpers on Time Team, mm -hmm. that again defined an image. But he didn't, or if, it, if it, yeah, okay, Time Team was a character driven show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it was like in in that sense, it was like a police procedural. Yes, yeah, um, complete with the forensics. Mm -hmm. And, and that was, but I think that was why it was such a winning formula, and why no one's actually been able to replicate it since, or mm. replicate its success. Um, you know, but it, it 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 defined effective effectively two images for archaeology. One is the, yeah, you know, we can joke about it. It's the slightly eccentric, mitt wearing coloured jumpers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, lots of. Army surplus DPM on on on, 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 on view and so on, uh, but, and, and a myriad of esoteric expertise as well, and yeah. the myriad of yeah. esoteric expertise, yeah. absolutely G -g giving you know, ho hopefully an appearance fee to lots and lots of specialists who probably got paid if they did get paid they got but would pay better than they would have get got for writing a average report probably and mm -hmm. certainly would have got a, a larger audience mm -hmm. and their expertise in whatever it happened to be. Yep, I, I can't fault that at all. But uh, no, I think the other the other image that Time Team defined and it's absolutely crucial i think it's absolutely crucial we try 
as a profession, as a discipline, uh, uh, try to capitalise on it moving forward, is the image of expertise being deployed by a team of experts working together to problem solve and provide an evidential pathway to a conclusion. Yeah, yeah, and in that sense, very. I mean, another way of putting it is, I suppose, very thoughtful progression. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and actually considering what the next step is, and in some ways explaining that. And and you see, I, I, it's one of those weird things where I think lots of archaeologists they get very again they get very frustrated with the fact that time team introduced a sort of this like the arbitrary the dilemma of the three day problem. You know, it's, oh, it's our day two, we haven't found anything yet, and, you know, and so what? Key, but that's that's I think that's a bit of a red herring within archaeology. It's a complete rhythm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, in so much as that was just the format of the show, but um, I think I think one thing that they did well, I think one thing actually that actually Paul Blinkhorn's pub dig picked up quite nicely, although sadly mm -hmm. it didn't it didn't get picked up um, uh, as a for you know for more than one series, was being allowed in and being let into that archaeological discourse. Uh, in that sense, for example, especially in pub dig, you really felt as though you were part of what or, you know. You could hear the conversations that were going on. You could understand the logic of the decision, decision making, and this was, this was certainly something which was introduced in Time Team. And so, and then, and, and yeah, and then, and then in that sense, I guess coming back to this question of Indiana Jones, uh, it, all of that is mediated by the image. So, in the case of Pub Dig, Paul Blinkhorn, the biker archaeologist. In the case of Time Team, Mick Aston, and also. Baldrick or Tony, you know, Tony Robinson, they, these were strong images, I suppose. And um, actually, I was lucky enough uh, to to once bump into, well, once or twice actually, bump into into Mick, and um, and he he uh, there was something about it's almost like you know like when they say when you're drawing a cartoon character, it has to have an identififiable silhouette to work. Yeah. So Mickey Mouse, Bart Simpson, so yeah, well, well Mick, Mick had done that for himself. You know, you could tell he was Mick. Because of, and he but, it, but it, there was no it, but he wasn't doing it for that you know it just happened very naturally and I think that's probably one of the reasons why it worked and so so in that sense coming you know bring it all back we, we, we in that sense yes we definitely do need I think talisman and we need uh, you, know, or ta you know men isn't necessarily you know, the, the operative element there but we need we need touchstone personality certainly um, and I, I just think it's just a shame it's a shame that that Sarah's work is being linked so you so. Uh, um, habitually, so ubiquitously, uh, so you universally in that sense, to Indiana Jones, because in some ways, some of this stuff is, is some of the most accessible archaeology that people can have. You know, they, 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 she's looking for sort of crowd um, crowd uh, sourcing of you know data analysis, so asking oh, people yeah. to help look at yeah. pictures, and, um, and and this it's also, I mean, there are other, it this also happens actually with monuments too, in the sense that there there have been stories linked with. Um, for example, actually South America, where she's currently working, where they found some earthworks um, in, 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 on the edge of the Amazon, or you know, on the edge, certainly you know, some areas which have been deforested or whatever in some clearings, which the headline feels the need to say earthworks resembling Stonehenge have been found in South America. And the thing is, I get it. I do get it because for the person who just picks up the paper over their breakfast, Stonehenge is a reference point. And they're able to jump off and understand what's being taught. But the fact, the problem is, though, is that these earthworks do not resemble Stonehenge at all. In, you know, in, in not only in in terms of shape, but also just in terms of the the nuances of the structure of what Stonehenge is. And so, I don't. I mean, maybe again, maybe this is one of those things where I'm just too close to to the issue. I just get too frustrated. But I can't help but wonder whether whether or not there needs to be a. a and this is the reason for all of this, for the public image, for the getting involved, as we were talking about before in terms of social media, just sort of trying to build up a generalised vocabulary where people don't have to rely on indie, Stonehenge, and, you know, Egyptians, and this kind of, you know, they can slightly broaden their interests. I, 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 I take the point on that. Hmm. I will be very, very wary, though, of producing a sort of um, index of monument class descriptions for archaeologists. <laughs> <laughs> You know uh, the, 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 the sort of the, the, the accepted the, the accepted language. Yeah, you know, we all accept that when we are talking amongst ourselves and even talking amongst our particular specialisms, mm. there are there, there are kinds of jargon that we would use that others might not recognise. You know, as a conflict archaeologist, I might talk start talking about type twenty fours and type twenty fives and 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 dragons teeth. And you're thinking, wait a minute, what's he talking about? Yeah, Game of Thrones. You know. Yeah. Um, 
uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about World War II defences, pillboxes, um... and, uh, and, and and bits of basically wartime concrete. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I've just explained that to you in jargon terms and in accessible terms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think the trick is that we have to learn to use different languages for different audiences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes back to our argument about engagement. Mm. Um, you know, you, you engage with colleagues at a conference, right, delivering a, a, a paper in a different way to you engage with the community. And, and again, picking up the point about Time Team and Paul's program, PubDig, which again, I, I share your um, like of and, and, and disappointment that it was it, it, it it wasn't allowed to grow in the way that Time Team was. Hmm. Um, is that the both of those programs acknowledged that you weren't just uh, experts telling a story to the grateful public? Mm-hmm. You know the old um, the old gag about uh, the political interview that ended. And uh, Minister, is there anything else you'd like to say to a grateful country? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, I do, it, I do hope my question well, turns those, been program, too those programs grew out of an involvement with the community, the community where the, the action was happening. The, you know, the, 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 the up summit, ti- the, the end of every Time Team episode is members of the local community sharing the knowledge that's being gained mm. about the place where they live so that you know, there's something left when the caravan of TV moves on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that's a really important thing. I think we, should, you know, we, we mustn't let go of that. Hmm. It, 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 in a sense, it ties in the whole of this first half of the podcast, mm-hmm. the, 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 the program. In, engagement and image are all part and parcel of the same thing. Hmm. It's how we share our archaeology with the audiences who are interested enough to want to know. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, and maybe that's maybe that's maybe that's the point. You see, is that I think often the people writing aren't interested enough to know you know so so the per- so for example the person who's referring to to in- it could be they could describe it as an enclosure an earthwork a ditch a rampart or whatever revetment they could use any sort of language which or, or even just you know yeah just very simple lines and you know what they could use any language they want any sort of description that they want but instead they use a lazy shorthand to a monument and a time that has nothing to do with south america can i can i maybe explain that to you uh-huh. in, in, or at least offer off, off, off a possible explanation to that for you mm-hmm. uh, most uh, uh m- m- most um publications these days don't have a specialist in fact virtually all general publications uh, broadcast and don't have specialist archaeology correspondent. They might have culture correspondent who maybe has archaeology as part of their brief. Mm. Or they'll use freelancers. Mm. Uh, or they'll use general reporters because mm-hmm. they're cheaper. And if you're a general reporter and you've managed to se- you managed to sell it as a three or a five paragraph story to your editor, you haven't got time to explain the differences between the archaeology of the Amazon jungle and the archaeology of Salisbury Plain. Mm. You, and also you're writing for a general audience too. Hmm. So you have to, again, it's about gateways. So you, you, you introduce the idea in the simplest way that you can, in the quickest and most economical way you can. Okay. Uh, so you can move on to the meat of it. And I can buy into that. And also there is there is this element that incre- increasingly journalists, for example, on, on Twitter, they'll describe themselves as writers because they are there's an increasingly a freelance model. I, I do I, I do buy into that and I accept that point. But I suppose therefore then, I suppose I'd be interested to know at what point this uh, this idea is being introduced. So for example, I would like, so long as the archeologists and the, the institutions who are, who are putting this out there aren't putting in their press release. <laughs> this is like Stonehenge, then that's fine because People can translate that in, 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 and 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 make it make use of it as as they see fit in a way which is which is communicative, communicatively effective, if that's a, if that's a phrase. But I suppose it's just that it's just it's just that handoff, I suppose, from accurate. And I'm not expecting people to be experts, but just accurate information and lazy references, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I, I again, I, I take that on point, and I. You know, I do share again the frustration mm. with inaccurate or inappropriate, complete um, analogies where they're avoidable. Mm. Um, if you're talking about the kind of journalism um, whereby 
paper simply recycle press releases again because that's very cheap. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You just you just you just you just sub the press release back in, in in the office. You don't have to send anybody out in the field. You don't have to send anyone out to do an interview or anything like that. You just sub the press release, make it look slightly make it look slightly different and, and, and drop it into your it, 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 into your into your page and that um, if it if that is leading to problems then the problems are in the original writing of the press releases not in the way they're treated by the papers perhaps yeah. you know that um, it uh, and I mean, I'm not going to name names here but certainly there was a case uh, I was involved with relatively recently where a university um, badly over egged mm. a press release mm-hmm. to get clicks and to get pick up from mm. the mainstream media, which they got in spades. Unfortunately, it, it jumped up and bit them because the piece of evidence that they were citing in the press release was actually very quickly questioned by other experts, and there's a ding dong row going on about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it may have been overinterpreted, mm. so you know the, 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 there's a danger in 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 in, 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 in all this um, too. And, and I think I think that the, the um, one of the things I'd always uh, say is if you're concerned about image, if you're concerned about that sort of thing, control the message. Be part of not control the message. Be a part of the messaging <laughs> for as long as you possibly can. Don't just let the press office um, write something, put it out. Insist on a right of, you know, a, a, a right of final edit. Yeah. yeah. And, well, and that's, I, I suppose we, we should uh, again just bring this section to a close in a moment. But um, that's actually that's something which uh, again is often learned the hard way. So, for example, at, at a site called Binchester, which I've been visiting, and I'll be going back to this year as well. Um, the site manager um, uh, David Petz <laughs> had a had a had a fascinating time uh, when he he they'd found this wonderful statue statue head uh, it made you know, it made the the press internationally um, but the press office insisted on comparing it to Gaza apparently and and but he, but, but the, because of where he was working and because of the distance between the office and the the field site he didn't have an oversight on that and. That did bite him. <laughs> and he, he was. Yeah, I think I, I seem to recall he got very frustrated. I, I might have some of the facts there wrong, but anyway, the fact that just just in case he you know he sees this and goes, Ur, I understand. I might have got something wrong there. But the point is, at some point in that chain, someone said Gaza, and uh, and Gaza ended up being being the headline, uh, certainly in the Sun, and uh, and and you know he was saying you know he said to me sort of, and I think he wouldn't mind me saying this. He, he said that he said, certainly learned lessons in that sense. And you can see that there is a maturity that comes, I suppose, with exposure as well to the you know, to how the press thinks and works. And so, in that sense, I think it's a good thing that that, as we were talking about this before, uh, that people are thinking about engagement more at, at student level. And so, eventually, when it comes to you know talking to the press, you think about, well, you know, am I helping? Actually, am I helping the writer to to make this interesting as well, as much as just be accurate, I suppose. Uh, 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 yeah, mm. I think you're absolutely right there. I think um, you know we, we we learn new ways of messaging in the way that we learn new technologies, and we you know we, we, we the things that we grow up with we take through our careers with us. I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Mm. Okay, well.